If you just recorded a drum take with multiple mics set up, you're still probably tempted to quantize it a little bit and maybe comp together the best takes. Here's how to do it safely using Logic Groups. Hey, my name is Steve, composer, engineer, and lecturer. Welcome back to the channel. Today, we're taking a look at some of the tools that you're gonna need for multi-track drum recordings. This is where Logic's group settings really shine. I'm not talking about instrument stacks or track stacks. I'm talking about groups that you see in the mixer, groups such as these. So let's dive in and take a look at why we would need them. So you can see here that I have a multi-track library and it has some tempo changes throughout the piece as we get to choruses and verses. And we can see that we've got multiple microphones being used. I haven't done anything to editing them at the moment. There are no plugins on. I haven't done any panning or level changes. This is literally just the raw recording of these drum mics. Because first I wanna make sure that I have the right take and have everything nicely tightened up through quantization. The problem that can occur when you've got multiple mics set up is something called phasing. That basically means that one microphone captures something slightly later than the other microphone. It's the same source, but because it's slightly later, sometimes the waves cancel each other out. There's a huge amount of audio practice and principles behind phase cancellation, but essentially that's what it's doing. It's canceling out the sound that we actually wanna hear, more often than not the bass frequencies. This is super important, of course, with kick drums and that sort of stuff. So we need to make sure that when we're editing multi-track stems from a drum recording, we're not creating these phase problems through what we're doing. What I mean by this is if you wanted to quantize something, so you wanted to move the beat of the audio forwards or backwards, you're gonna cause some phase issues if you only do that to individual tracks. Let's say you move the snare drum just a little bit more ahead so it's on time, but your overhead microphones are still playing them back in exactly the same spot. So now you've actually got two hits and you're introducing phase issues. So to overcome this, you need to make sure that whenever you move a particular transient on one track, you need to move it in the same spot on all of the tracks. So that way, whatever has been recorded is moving along with it. The other thing as well is if you've got take folders and you've recorded maybe three takes of the verse and five takes of the chorus or whatever to get the best performance, you're going to need to make sure you don't overlap these takes. What I mean by this is you need to make sure that when you cut in those comps, everything starts and stops at the same time and everything is on the same take, no matter how many microphones you've got set up. You can imagine if you've got 20 mics set up, you're gonna want a fast, easy way to make sure that you've got the same take on every single thing and the same transient being moved on every single track as well. That's what I'm gonna show you today. So first of all, let's take a look at this session. Moving from the verse to the chorus here, I actually have a new take to play with. If I open up one of these, you can see there are a number of takes, lots of things that have been recorded here and there just to patch up issues or try different variations. And we can see that we're going from verse into a chorus here. If I play that, let's have a listen. It sounds nice and seamless because what I've done is I've made sure that my comps start and stop at the right spot. If you're familiar with take folders in Logic, you'll know that this is the active take which then shifts to this take and you can drag and move these about between them. If I zoom in here, you can see it's not too bad but it could certainly do with some tightening up. Now, if I was to move this across, I need to make sure that every other track below, which includes this kick out mic, needs to move with it. You'll see that if I do this now, this one updates, and that's because of our groups. So let's have a quick play, see how that sounds. Nice strong kick sound at the beginning of the bar there, much better. So what I've done to be able to make this comp folder all active and copy across to all of these, is I've tied all of these tracks to a group. If I open up my mixer, you can see that that group is there. If I select one of these groups, for example, I can create a new group. I can say no group, so I can take it off a group if I want to eventually. But tying them to a group means that I can have all of these tracks do certain things together rather than just individually. I can choose to either open up group settings here and it will pop out into another window, or if I jump over to here and open up my groups, I can see my active group drums and I can open up my settings. So the important thing here is I've got something called editing selection turned on. 
it means that when I select something on the take folder, the whole drum group is going to move along with it. So every single take is going to happen. I recommend when you're recording your drums, lay out your multi-track and enable that group straight away. That way in the session, you can do comps to try different things out and you know you're not going to screw around with phase or accidentally merge two takes together. So it's great to have it on from the word go. Other sort of features under here, you can see things like volume and mute. So that if I tap mute on the one track, it mutes the whole lot. Those things are nice little features. You can turn them on and off based on what you need. You might want to be able to solo the whole group, for example, every time you hit S. Those features are there for you if you would like. Now, let me close the mixer. Let me close my take folder. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to flatten all of these tracks so that they are single files. Then I'm going to do some quantization. All right, so I'm going to jump in here and I'm just going to go flatten and merge. And because they're all part of a group, it's going to do the whole lot. All right, so I now have all of my takes flattened out and I now have single audio files for all of them. Now I want to do some quantization. At this point, I need to turn on something else on our group settings. So you saw over here before we had editing selection turned on. Now I want to do something called quantize locked. If I turn this one on, you'll notice that all these cues appear on all of our tracks. That means that all of these tracks are quantized locked. What quantized locked means is if I quantize or change a transient on one track, it'll change the same transient by the same value on all of the tracks. And that is going to prevent any issues in phase when we start moving these transients around. There is a quick way of quantizing all of these beats, of course. First of all, we need to turn on flex time. That's this little button up the top here. We open this up and turn on flex time for all of these tracks it's going to need to jump through and analyze all the transients. So again, we'll wait for it to process all of it. OK, so you can see here after it's done, it has processed it and it has tried to work out where all the transient and hits are in this piece. And it's done fairly well. I mean, looking at the waveform, it seems like everything is lined up. The critical thing you'll be noticing, though, is that no matter what track is being hit, the same transients are on every single track. That is the critical thing about quantized locked audio. So for example, we can see that there are very little tom hits in these sections, but they've still got all the transient markers so that even if we move a transient somewhere else, it's going to move this track. The real reason this is important is because microphone bleed. Two microphones have been set up, one microphone to capture one drum and the other to capture a different drum. But those microphones are close together. Those drums are close together. So when you hit one drum, you're going to hear the other drum bleed into the other microphone. That's sort of part of the noise that we really want to cut out. And there's lots of ways that we can do that. But if we start moving things around and disregard the fact that there is microphone bleed, that bleed could start to cancel or phase cancel things in other more prominent and important tracks. So that's why this is really important. Now that I have this transient all on and it's selected slicing, which is quite good. That's a the perfect algorithm for drums. It means it will cut and move the audio without time stretching it, which is much more preferable for drums. Now I want to do some automatic quantization. If we look over the top here, we can actually see now a quantize is on. That wasn't there before until we turned on flex edit. Now I can set this just like with MIDI or piano rolls, we can set it to a particular value. I might say eighth note. And you'll see it process and move everything around. Quite often it doesn't sound perfect straight off the bat. There are things to adjust. If we go to that first verse into the chorus, let's take a listen and see how it's done. There's something weird going on there. So let's take a look. If I open up my E, I'm jumping into the editor. And as I can see my kick drum here, there's something weird going on with this kick drum. So let's open up and take a look at what's going on. So it's sort of at this point, something kicks in here. Now, as I hover over the transients, you can see how far the transient has been moved. And this, I, I feel like we can see the issue straight away. This transient is being moved from on the grid here, snapping it over to here. That's likely because I used the eighth note. So it's trying to snap it to the nearest eighth note when it was actually on a sixteenth note. Now I can do two things here. I can either try the sixteenth and see if that you know, corrects the issue. Or if I just need to do some tightening up on just a few hits that were wrong, I can just remove those transients or move them back to where they should be. My preferred way is often just to remove the transient. 
At the end of the day, we don't want a perfectly 100% feel, so by removing the transient, we remove that issue. And the same here. So it's done in a couple of cases. It's just snapping things too far. Looks like it might be a little bit better. Let's, let's have a listen to that. Much nicer, that's what we're looking for. Now, one last thing to show you with this is that quantization is not best at 100%. The reason for this, and it's debatable, it depends on preference, I suppose, but particularly on a lot of styles that are more acoustic in nature, like rock and pop, that have elements of players performing stuff, you don't want to snap it 100% to the grid because you will lose the human element out of it. Up here where we were before with quantization, if we open up the more section, we have Q strength. So I can pull this back to maybe 80 or 70% just to help with the feel. Now, of course, I needed to have done that before I went in and done my individual transient shifts. So make sure before you come in here and edit and move these that you've set your strength already. All right, so I hope I've demystified editing multiple drum mics. It can be really overwhelming to begin with when you see all these microphones, but you can get it done, you can treat it the right way with some very easy tools in Logic Pro. This of course is just shaping up the drums and quantizing them and you know selecting your take folder. There is far more to be done with this recording. Why not consider subscribing so you can see some of that journey ahead. Otherwise, thank you for checking out this video and I will see you in the next one. Catch you later.